this year. That's right, Bill Finley in his 30th year at Iowa State. Like you said, very high expectations, picked second in the Big 12 Conference, top 10 preseason ranking for this Iowa State team. A lot to look forward to at Hilton Coliseum for the Cyclone Faithful. A little different story for Chicago State, Corey Irvin, first year head coach. This is a Chicago State program that historically hasn't been as strong, but she is a Chicago area native. She knows Chicago basketball and they're in a new conference. She's looking forward to, to slowly turn the tide there in the south side. Absolutely, let's take a look at our spotlight uh, players. For uh, Josie Hills, who we're gonna take a look at for Chicago State, not a big score a year ago, but she can really block shots. It'll be fun to watch her and Audie Crooks on the inside. Nine points a game a year ago. Coach Corey Irvin looking for more scoring out of Josie this year. And for the Cyclones, we're going to talk about Audie Crooks. You can't talk about Iowa State women's basketball without talking about number 55. The Algona native really busted onto the scene, not only in the Big 12 Conference, but nationally. These clips that we're showing you, these are clips from her 40-point game against Maryland in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Her life changed pretty dramatically after that. She has gotten a lot of uh, attention here in the state of Iowa and nationally as well. Very well deserved. She's looking for a big sophomore season. So it's the Chicago State Cougars just one and 26 a season ago. And as Molly told you, trying to get things rebuilt against the Cyclone team that won the Big 12 Tournament Championship, went on to the NCAA Tournament, almost beat Stanford in the second round, and they are very excited about a number eight ranking. It should be a most interesting season for both these teams as Chicago State tries to rebound and Iowa State tries to continue the momentum with those freshmen leading the way last season. Adi Crooks into the center circle. The officials are Scott Yarborough, Zach Ross, and it's Tiffany Bridges who will toss the ball up and we get this season underway. A season, as we mentioned, of high anticipation, certainly on the Iowa State side. Emily Ryan, the outstanding fifth year point guard for the Cyclones, works it inside to Crux and the Cyclones are on the board. Well, not surprising that right out of the gates, Iowa State looking inside to Audie Crux and it's Addie Brown doing the distributing. Those two names you will hear often throughout this broadcast and throughout the season. Chicago State starts this season without the top returning score from a year ago. Jacia Cunningham out with an ACL torn late last season. They hope to have her back by Thanksgiving or a little later. So for Coach Corey Irvin, not exactly the lineup she anticipated when she started. The point guard Honecker makes the penetration but can't score and here comes Iowa State. Number two is Ariana Jackson, the sophomore from Des Moines. Again, they work it inside to Crooks with the misses Crooks and with the rebound is Keona McGee. Kayla Mount drawing the early defensive assignment against Audie Crooks. Thought we might have seen Josie Hill defending her, but Kayla Mount has had a recent illness. Coach Corey Irvin just happy to have her back in the lineup. She is gonna have to work awfully hard today against Audie. The big story for Iowa State would be who would be that fifth starter. There was no question about Jackson, Ryan, Brown, and Crooks. The question was who would be number five. Bill Fenley said that might be a position that changes all year, but today, it's number 32, Eileen Tanky, a freshman from Johnson, Iowa. Well, this Iowa State team returns a, a nice mix of newcomers, six of them, two freshmen, four transfers, and then six returners. So this is an Iowa State team that is well established on the offensive end, but they have a few spots, and, and that three guard position is what you're mentioning. Eileen Tanky out of Johnson getting that start today, but plenty of other Cyclones will have an opportunity to step in, play some good minutes. Crooks goes to the line with a foul on Asha Walker. Crooks averaged 19 points a ball game last season. Got to the free throw line 174 times, hit 66% of her free throws. Bill Fenley says you're gonna get to the line a lot, like to see you improve that average, and so far, so good. She has that nice stroke. Watching her in practice yesterday, I had a chance to come over for a while, and she's definitely expanded on her repertoire, her bag of tricks on the offensive end. The officials momentarily stopped play. Not sure that the shot clock started. And now Josie Hill, the junior from Rapid City, South Dakota, and with the absence of Cunningham in the starting lineup, she is the top returning scorer for the Cougars from last season. Taking it inside is Keanu McKee. The Cyclones collapsing defensively, and the first foul called against Iowa State's against Ariana Jackson. 
Nice penetration by the freshman McGee out of Milwaukee. Coach Irvin mentioned might see her at some point guard a little bit this season. Not a natural position for her, but Coach Irvin feels like that is she has the tools to be able to do that for this squad. Transition score, that's one of the ways that Coach Corey Irvin describes Fiona McGee. Another player that Coach Irvin thought might be in the starting lineup, Ilana Culver coming off an Achilles injury, and so she is not in action. Lead feed for Brooks, who runs the floor after those free throws misses. Here's Jackson looking for three. And really nice recognition by Audie Crook. She had two Cougars surrounding her. Calmly kicks out to Emily Ryan, who makes that extra pass to Ariana Jackson. That was definitely an area that Iowa State wanted to address in the transfer portal. And they also fulfill that with their newcomers. Is that three-point shooting? They know Audie Crooks will get all sorts of defensive attention. She needs to be ready to kick out. Shooters need to be able to find an open window to be able to set up, catch, and shoot from deep. On the post, it is Mount, and she draws a foul. And Ariana Jackson, two quick fouls for Iowa State. So Bill Fenley will go to his bench right away. And going to the free throw line, Kayla Mount. Mount, who was in the hospital last week with a bad virus. And again, she was questionable today, but she is in that lineup right now. Won't be surprised if they have to watch her minutes a little bit. Having a, a respiratory issue not all that long ago. Probably not quite in the conditioning shape she would like to be, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. Like we said, she's drawn that very challenging defensive assignment, at least early on, of guarding Audie Crooks. Nine newcomers in the Chicago State lineup. Here's Pinky firing the three. Her first collegiate shot and her first collegiate basket. Well, Coach Bailey just mentioned Amy Pinky is the kind of player who she doesn't make a lot of mistakes. She could be out on the court for five or six minutes, and she may not that was the stuff the box score but she also is uh, really limits the, the miscues. Kenzie Hare onto the floor for Iowa State replacing Jackson who got those two early fouls. Oh, I take that back Jackson is still in. As the three point drop by Eileen Tanky. Well she was the national girl three point shootout winner a season ago so this start probably no great surprise. Well Iowa State always a, a really good three point shooting team under Bill Finley's tutelage. They've done that for now in his 30th year, but last year they were a really good three-point percentage shooting team, so if they can increase on that even more so with some of these new players, they're going to be awfully hard to beat with that inside-outside combination. Goes to Hill taking her first shot and misfiring, and Hill at the other end knocks it away from Ariana Jackson. And now Jackson will leave, and Kenzie Hare comes in. Emily Ryan already with a couple of quick assists in this game. Nice distribution of the basketball. Tanky, who you saw drain her second three, last season hit 50% of her three-point shots, 57% overall for Johnston High School. We're going to see a couple more early substitutions for the Cyclones. Sydney Harris is one who comes in. Also number 23 is Kelsey Jones, the returnee from a year ago. Kenzie Hare, as we mentioned, number 12, she's from Marquette. So many new players, we'll talk about them all, try to get to introduce them a little bit more. And also in the lineup is Elisa Williams, the transfer from LSU, who was a red shirt last season for the Cyclones. Down the lane comes Hare, can't finish it. Ryan, I should say, can't finish the shot. Chicago State looks for their first points. They don't get them that time. And there to deflect the shot, Alisa Williams. Air fires from three-point range. The transfer from Marquette. And the Cyclones have a 16 to nothing previously. And as you see, Iowa State has won them all. And as long as Bill Finley has been at Iowa State, this is only the second time that he has faced Chicago State. Well, like you mentioned, Larry, things could not have started any better for Iowa State. This highly anticipated season, I would say, for Coach Corey Irvin and the Cougars maybe couldn't have started any worse, down 16-0 to zero early on. A lot of momentum, a lot of enthusiasm around this Iowa State program, and so far, five minutes in, Cyclone's certainly answering the call. Not even five minutes, excuse me, about four minutes. And they have not missed a three-point shot yet. They are 4-4 four four behind the three-point line, and 5-7 overall. 
from the free throw line. The shot won't go by Hill. Scrap for the rebound, and coming out with it is Alisa Williams, and she's going to get a lot of rebounds this year, the Cyclones anticipate. That time a carry called against Kenzie Hare, and the Cyclones turn it over. You can see early on Iowa State looking to push tempo when they can. Last year, Iowa State opponents turned it over a little less than 11 times a game, and Bill Fenley said last year the emphasis with a whole bunch of new players was on developing the offense. This year, a lot more work on the defense, and so far, very impressive as the shot by Alana Culver misfires for the Cougars. Emily Ryan, the outstanding All-American potential point guard, gets the ball inside. Shot won't go by Sydney Harris, the transfer from TCU, but the Cyclones get another rebound. Good look at that shot blocking ability by Hill, number 14 that we talked about in the intro. A baseline drive results in a pair for Kelsey Jones, who averaged 5.3 a game last season, made six starts, appeared in every Cyclone game. And that possession, a great illustration of the unselfish basketball. Corey Irvin, when we chatted with her, she said she was so impressed about Iowa State and their unselfish sharing of the basketball a year ago. That possession, everyone always wanting to kick, probably had a couple of open looks, but they knew that their teammate had a look that was even better. We don't settle for a contested jumper. All the good things that are said about Iowa State, she thinks the unselfishness of the Cyclones might be underrated a bit. Yep. Cyclones getting ready to send some new players in the ballgame. Four substitutions, in fact, including one who's not seen action so far today. Lily Hansberg, transfer from Oregon State. And also, can she wears number six. And also coming in is Reagan Wilson, the backup point guard, number 22. And Wilson has had to shoulder a little bit more of the load this year because Emily Ryan's still on somewhat of a minute count or a pitch count, as Bill Fenley likes to say it, as she recovers from the eating disorder that she was very prominent and public about last season. Well, Reagan Wilson wearing that jersey number two. A lot of Cyclone fans came away from their exhibition game impressed with her play. Hansford on the miss, and the rebound scooped up by Asha Walker, who fires a three herself, looking for the first Cougar basket. And taking the rebound is Lily Hansford. Brings good size at 6 to a junior, who went to UMass last season. Crooks off the baseline. Rebound flapped away, but it is controlled by Chicago State. That shot won't go down, and the Cougars are icy to start the ball game. They have missed their first eight shots. Well, they've gotten some good looks at the hoop. Tracked down a few offensive rebounds, just have not been able to convert. Reagan Wilson, who has the broken nose, and that's why she's wearing the mask, broke it in practice three weeks ago. The family said... They put a mask on her, and 20 minutes later, she is back in practice as it's Addie Brown getting her first basket of the season for Iowa State. Of course, Brown coming off a terrific season as well as Crooks. That one-two freshman duo talked about all over the country last season. Megan Wilson going to be called for a hand check. Point of emphasis, at least in the early part of the season. See if it's still a point of emphasis once we get to midseason. Reagan Wilson picks up the foul and inbounding for Chicago State. Marissa Gant, a freshman from Springfield. There are nine newcomers on this roster for Chicago State, and again, five returnees, and one of them not able to play today. You see a Cunningham, the returning top scorer, as she recovers from an ACL injury. Trying to force her way in and instead getting the walking call for Chicago State. At that time, trying to bring it inside was Evangelina Parrish, one of the few experienced players for Coach Corey Urban's team this season. Addie Brown here, he called for a, a violation on the out of bounds play. It was a dead ball scenario, so she wasn't able to move. She must have gotten a little confused, a bit of a sigh. Addie just a little bit of a brain miscue there on the turnover. Chicago State still looking for their first basket as they are now 0 for 9. The lob comes inside. Hardy Crooks fires and misses, but she will go to the foul line. Good recognition by Addie Brown. A little bit of a lob pass up over the top. Chicago State with a little bit of a front defense. 
many crooks catches that low, good luck. There are just not many players who are going to stop her once she establishes that low block position. And that's what we saw out of her so much a year ago was her strength. Coach Finley talked about her needing to develop more of a counter move. A couple possessions ago, we saw a little more of a, a reverse pivot and a almost like a fadeaway jumper, something that she's added to her game. She can knock that down with consistency in addition to her more of her power game. She'll be even more hard to stop. Crooks last year, the four-time freshman of the week and two-time player of the week in the Big 12. And of course, the unanimous first team selection. And we talked about how she wanted to improve her free throw shooting. She is four for four so far as Elisa Williams to back onto the floor for Iowa State, the transfer from LSU. Well, Coach Finley would really like Williams and Crooks to get to the point where the two of them are sharing those 40 minutes. That's an ideal scenario is to have one of them in the game at all times. Culver being guarded closely by Hare. The three-point try off the mark from Marissa Gant. Tanky pushing the break. A three try comes from Addie Brown, who had 52 of those last season in the Cyclones. 25 to nothing lead here in quarter number one. Pulling up, looking for the three-point shot. Asha Walker, and again, it's one and done. That's been the story as Addie Brown, who averaged the team best eight rebounds a game last season, comes up with that carom. Finds Williams in deep, and Williams scores. And Alyssa Williams has her first basket as a Cyclone. Cyclone just on a tear here in the early going. Nine of 14 from the field, five of six from downtown, and a perfect four of four at the charity stripe. I don't know that you could script a start much better than that, Larry. And of course, Chicago State, a team that is again trying to rebuild. Last year, they had a couple of lopsided road losses. Went to Notre Dame and lost 113 to 35. Went to Minnesota and lost 142. So when you're trying to build a program, and quite frankly, you need some revenue for your other programs, you're going to take your lumps, but hopefully they're learning experiences for a team like Chicago State. Yep. Brown finds Tanky. Brown looks inside for Williams. Turns, fires, and scores again. Back to back basket by Alyssa Williams. Final minute, first quarter. Traveling violation called against Eliana Culver, and the Cyclones get the basketball with a six second differential between the shot clock and the end of the first quarter. I'm impressed with the defensive rebounding for Iowa State so far. Chicago State with 14 missed shots. They've only been able to track down a couple of offensive rebounds now. Iowa State quite a bit bigger in stature but are doing a good job of boxing out and really working hard to aggressively retrieve the basketball on the defensive end. Tanky looks to Ryan open in the left corner. Williams had the rebound for a moment. Knocked away from her but it's picked up by Tanky. And the ball bounded out of bounds off Chicago State. So now just a second and a half differential between the shot clock and the end of the first quarter. Which for Iowa State probably couldn't have gone any better. Addie Brown at the top. Ryan. Tanky. He's already hit two threes. Misfires that time. Chicago State trying to score. They've not yet scored in this quarter. There's the shot by Culver, and it banks in. Chicago State scores in the waning moments of the first quarter, but the Cyclones take a 29-3 lead at the end of one quarter of play. You're watching Big 12 Basketball on ESPN+. $20 and get an annual subscription for the price of nine months. Good deal there. Great start for Iowa State. Well, like we mentioned before the break, Larry, couldn't have scripted it much better for Iowa State. They shoot 59% from the field, including five of eight from downtown. That's 63%. Couple players with six points apiece, and Eileen Tanky, the freshman, out of uh, Johnson getting the start for the Cyclones, and Audie Crooks with six. She is clearly the go-to player for Iowa State, but Pretty nice when you have Addie Brown, Emily Ryan, those two players with three and four assists, respectively. Cyclones sharing the basketball really well. 
of their 10 field goals, nine assisted. And Culver, who got the last and only basket of the first quarter for the Cougars, has their first basket here in the second quarter. Bill Fenley got to play all 11 players who were dressed for this game in the first quarter. The feed intended for Crooks, but it's intercepted. And bringing it the other direction is Asha Walker. The point guard is Culver, and again, she's been their only scorer thus far. Working her way inside, Josie Hill, and off the glass and down for Hill, who averaged nine points a game for the Cougars last season and blocked 76 shots. Eight straight points for the Cougars. It is Reagan Wilson, the true freshman from Noblesville, Indiana, number 22, handling the basketball at the point. She finds Crooks, and Crooks finds a pair. Crooks with eight points thus far. Four of her six first quarter points came at the free throw line. That's reversal of the basketball by Iowa State out on the perimeter. Audie Crooks was just able to seal her defender. Very easy post-entry pass. Post-entry comes this time to Mount. She pitches it outside to Culver. Crooks trying to run down the rebound. It bounds away from her, and the shot won't go by Kayla Mount. Wilson, really an interesting story for Iowa State. Only received one Power 5 conference offer from everyone, but Bill Fenley saw her early and liked her a lot. We talked about how she's not all that big, but she has a big heart, plays really hard. Mentioned that when she got banged in the nose at practice, she came back <laughs> later on in the practice and was ready to suit back up. So definitely an indication of the kind of fighter that she is. Kayla Mount banks at home for Chicago State. So the Cougars, who are rattled perhaps by playing in one of the biggest venues they have played in in recent weeks, going back to early last season, they uh, maybe have come back a little bit here after the quarter break. And a change, once again, Crooks will go out. Alyssa Williams comes in. A 6'2 sophomore out of Denton, Texas, played high school ball for her mother. And what's her upside? Well, I think Alyssa, she played a year at LSU. They like the strength. They like she's a lefty. That's a little bit of a different dimension. Sometimes that takes a little bit for defenders to get used to. It's really seizing on this opportunity with the injury by other transfer, Lily Tolale. She is the only player for Iowa State who is not in uniform today, wearing a black shirt over on the bench next to Director of Operations, Josh Carper. So of Iowa State's 12 players, 11 are available, 11 have already played. Hoping that they'll get to Lole back in the next couple of weeks. It's a sprained ankle that has been keeping her on the sidelines. Again, Bill Fenley using his bench liberally as Brown, Jackson, Jones, and Ryan come back onto the court. There was a moment in the exhibition game last week where Bill Fenley used all five newcomers, and he said, you know, you might see that from time to time this year. Well, there's some minutes restrictions. Uh, Emily Ryan, uh, Kinsey Hare, a couple of players that aren't quite in a position to be able to play 30 to 35 minutes, so you have some minutes restrictions there that, that frees up some minutes for some others. Williams draws the foul, and she will go to the free throw line. Goes to that left hand, as I was saying, sometimes it takes defenders a, getting, a little getting used to. Early in the season, you don't have a scouting report. Chicago State really wouldn't have had much material to work with, particularly for someone like Williams, who hasn't played in the last year after transferring. Her so time at LSU two years ago, limited, played in 20 ball games, scored just 18 points. Right. But of course, she was playing on a team that won the national championship. Yep, so right. there weren't a lot of minutes for a newcomer to get. Williams with a quick five to start her Cyclone career. Ball comes inside, the turnaround is there by Hill. And Josie Hill with a couple of baskets for Chicago State. Emily Ryan, what a terrific career she's had last year. Averaged almost seven assists per ball game after missing the first 11 games of the year with the, as we mentioned, eating disorder that she was very public about, talked about what she's going through, and that's why her minutes will be limited. Brown 
Looks for three, not getting it. The rebound is taken by Jones. He pitches it back outside, and Jackson will get the ball inside. Williams draws a foul, and she's going to draw a lot of fouls this year. She's a tough matchup for a lot of teams, as Josie Hill found out there, drawing her second foul. Well, Iowa State, even though they do have so many good three-point shooters around Williams and Crook, they are definitely looking to play inside-out basketball, getting the basketball into the post whenever they can. Williams and Crooks, as opposing teams start to scout them more and more throughout the season, they'll be looking for those open shooters out on the perimeter. But clearly today, Cyclone's looking in first. Evangeline Parrish into the lineup for Chicago State. And of course, not only does she bring size and skill, but being a left-hander, she brings a different look we're talking about Elisa Williams. That's right. Adi Crook's about ready to come back in for Iowa State. Almost four minutes gone here in the second quarter. The 35 is Tally Williams making her first appearance for Chicago State. This is Culver, their point guard, working against Ryan. The switch picked up by Brown, and the rebound taken by Alyssa Williams. Nifty little footwork there by Culver, but only 5-3. She just runs into those tall trees once she gets into the inside of the defense. Ryan sees an opening, takes it a little bit too hard off the glass for Emily Ryan. Chicago State wants to push to the tempo when they get the opportunity. Tally Williams looking inside, posting up his Parrish. The shot comes from the outside. Jones tries to run down the rebound, but can't catch up to it, and the Cougars get the basketball. Crooks back in for Iowa State, and Williams will leave, and Alyssa Williams with a nice start to her Iowa State career so far. She's been able to get both of her baskets to go down and hit a couple of free throws as well. Jack Brost, one of the officials today, and hands the basketball off to Ayana Culver. Culver, one of three players out of Queens, New York. Coach Irvin feels like in their new conference, which is primarily East Coast schools, feels like recruiting out of New York City will be a good opportunity for her and her staff. Crooks unable to connect. It's called the Northeast Conference, not a new conference, but again, new to Chicago State. And they're a school that's really searched for a lot of conferences. Just in recent years, they were in the Mid-Continent Conference, the Great Western Conference, the Western Athletic Conference, and Independent the last two years before joining the Northeast Conference. The turnaround is scored by Addie Brown, and Brown with seven points for Iowa State as they build the lead to 37-13. A couple other schools in that NEC that Chicago State has joined, Fairleigh Dickinson, Wagner, those would be some examples of the schools out in that league. Ryan looked for someone to pass to, was ahead of the pack, so she took it herself. Jackson's there for the rebound. She feeds Brown. Brown's got two and will go to the line. Addie Brown will be at the line trying to complete a three-point play when we return to the Hilton Coliseum. You're watching Big 12 Basketball on ESPN+. Plus. NHL on ESPN Plus is back. Enjoy a thousand plus out of market games, exclusive matchups, marquee NHL events, and so much more. That's hockey on ESPN Plus. Sign up today. With the Addie Brown, who certainly has answered the call as well, and Coach Finley said last year we really focused on our offense because we had so many newcomers. I think for them to really be elite and live up to that top eight ranking that they have this year. They know that the defensive end is where that they will have to improve as the season progresses. Eddie Brown with four rebounds in addition to her nine points now completing the three-point play. She's in double figures and the Cyclones lead goes to 27. Eddie Brown last year, honorable mention, all Big 12. And one publication this year has her as the breakout player of the year. And I thought last year was a pretty good breakout season, so they're expecting even more of her this season, that being the athletic publication. Number four is Tanya Allen in for Chicago State for the first time. The sweeping hook by Asher Walker not there, and the Cyclones who have dominated the boards. The outlet, and then the foul called as Ryan catches the ball, and Hohenhecker picks up the foul. Good hustle play there, just 
some incidental contact as she tries to pursue that outlet pass. Emily Brown going up nice and strong. Emily Ryan, who is second all time free throw percentage for her career at Iowa State. Knocks the free throw down, her first point of the afternoon. An 89% free throw shooter last season and 87% for her career. Ryan, 69 of 78 a season to go for Iowa State. She makes it look easy, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. I don't know that everybody, anybody for Iowa State will ever match Kelsey Bolte, though, in that free throw percentage that she's shot as a Cyclone. She is that career leader. You're I right, Bolte number one. I don't know that Emily will catch her. That's quite a percentage she shot during her time here. That is an incredible percentage. Shot won't go by Allen, but the long rebound comes to Chicago State, and with it is Asha Walker. Iowa State a little diff different look on the defensive end, showing some zone defense for the first time in this game. Cougars just five seconds to shoot, and Addie Brown trying to prevent the ball from coming in bounds easily. Now shot clock down to two seconds. The running right-hander won't go by Hohenhecker, and the rebound is taken by Crooks. Ryan quickly up the floor, nice pass. She threads the needle to Eileen Tanky. Well, Emily Ryan, career assist leader for Iowa State already, and in her fifth season, taking advantage of that additional COVID year, she will have an opportunity to really add to it. Six assists already for Emily Ryan today, four rebounds as well. That is an amazing stat, isn't it? She and is the Cyclones, 14 assists and 15 baskets. Well, Emily is that consummate floor general leader that you want out of a point guard. It is so fun to come to a practice or watch her in a game when she is on the bench or on the floor, she is just constantly chattering. In fact, I think watching them during practice, teammates are looking to her almost as much as they're looking to the coaching staff to know what's going on. Brown to Crooks, that combination successful a lot of times last season, successful once again there, as Adi Crooks will go to the line with a chance at a three-point play. Crooks, a sophomore from Algona, Iowa, who exceeded expectations for everybody and probably but herself last season. You can tell she's really expanded on her game on the offensive end in the offseason. Her first free throw miss after five free throw makes. Crooks will now get a breather. Kenzie here, the transfer from Marquette has come on. So it's Brown, Tanky, and Harris up front for Iowa State. From the corner, the three is long. Thought there was a violation first. And the ball will go to Iowa State. Cyclones committing thus far three turnovers in Chicago State now with six. Ryan guarded by the much shorter five foot three inch Haley Hohenhecker. Out of the corner, Ryan for three. Emily Ryan with 27 of those last year has her first today. First field goal of the season for the fifth year senior. And a palming violation called against Chicago State. That will be their seventh turnover and Iowa State will get it back. Ryan spots up and has no trouble finding the bottom of the net. Pretty simple offensive set, pass to the wing, run to the corner, wide open, catch and shoot. Sydney Harris in the lineup now for Iowa State. Here's the left-hander, Lily Hansford. The ball comes inside to Addie Brown and she's gonna be called for a push, an offensive foul going against Brown. Her first foul. Two minutes and three seconds left to play in the first half of the first game of the season for Iowa State. A lot of teams are opening the season today, not too many in the morning, and so this is one of the handful of games to start a very exciting upcoming season. Iowa State men in action tonight, so not exactly a double header. It's a little later, not until this evening, but gives Hilton staff a little time to get the arena cleared out, get spruced up for the Coach Otzelberger and his team to take the floor. Ryan spins, misses as she led the break. Ryan gets down the floor so quickly she had no one to pass to. She was ahead of the pack once again. 
Cougars with a with minute 35 to go in the second quarter. Cougars shooting 14% from the field. Just five out of 34, that is tough. And that is good defense and certainly that a big part of it. And the spinning to the post is Melt. Committing the foul is Brown and that'll be her second. So Kayla Mount will go to the line. As we mentioned, she's the player who spent last week in the hospital with a virus infection. And Corey Urban, the first year head coach for Chicago State, wasn't sure she would even get Mount in the lineup today. And Mount is the starter, as she would hope well, she, that would be the case. Yeah, she's played 13 of the 18 minutes in this game. That's pretty impressive. Nice recovery. Yeah, when she started, I wasn't sure how long she would be able to go having recovered so just recently, but kudos to her. Offensive rebound that time, grabbed by a quick move by Tanya Allen, but she can't control it, so Iowa State gets it. Ryan and Harris in the backcourt for Iowa State, and again, Harris from Edwardsville, Illinois, played at TCU last season. Hansford works the ball inside to Brown, and Brown gets fouled. Mount picking up the foul. And Iowa State going with this little bit of a smaller lineup here. We've talked earlier about how coaching staff would like Williams or Crooks at that five player position. Those two players can get them to 40 minutes combined, but going with this little bit of a smaller lineup, of course, what a luxury to have a 6 2 <laughs> guard in Addie Brown who can step out and handle the basketball. She's just so versatile. Last yes. season, more than 400 points, more than 250 rebounds, more than 150 assists. One of just two players in Power Five conferences with those kind of numbers. And she's off to a terrific start thus far today. And she has 14 points. She and Ryan leading the way, or I should say uh, 14 points, 14 minutes is what I should say. Shot on the miss, the follow shot not there, and a foul called on the Cyclone. Sydney Harris getting her first foul. Addie Brown is the type of player that she is so talented and so versatile. She could be the featured player on a lot of teams uh, across the country, really good teams at that, but she is happy to be on a team where she will step up and do what the team needs. She is supremely confident in her abilities and in her game, and there will be nights where Addie Brown will I don't want to say disappear on the offensive end, scoring-wise, but if it's a night where others are knocking down shots, she can be a facilitator. Other nights, she can score 20, 25 points. Brown with 12 points to lead Iowa State so far this afternoon, as at the free throw line is Taylor Norris. Knock down a couple of free throws. Final minute, second quarter. Open look for Hansford looking for her first cyclone basket. Ryan distributes, open is Sydney Harris. And the rebound taken by Tanya Allen. Cyclone's cooling off just a tad from beyond the arc. They still right, right at 50% at six of 12. They hit their first four three-point tries. Shot by Norris won't go, and the Cyclones will have the ball for the final 16.6 seconds of the quarter if they choose to use all of that. Chicago State called for a foul on the rebound scramble. And Tanky will go to the free throw line. Eileen really Tanky, who played in four state tournaments at Johnston, Iowa High School, won two state championships, and again, the biggest surprise, according to Bill Fenley, preseason, and maybe surprising a lot of people by getting the first start of the season, filling that fifth starting spot position. Well, the lights don't seem to be too big for the freshman. She stepped into this game, knocked down her first two triples. She's now three of four from the field. Two of a total of nine points. That's right, two of three beyond the arc. Also with three rebounds. Just firing on the free throw. And Chicago State will have it with 14.6 left to play in the first half. 
Cyclones jumped off to a 29 to nothing lead with Chicago State's lone score in the first quarter in the final seconds of the first quarter. Culver bottled up defensively by Ryan. So she pitches it outside to Walker who drills a three. So she the league will head to Arizona and Arizona State for a, tr a trip in mid-January. Always kind of fun to see some new additions to the league. And, and like you said, expect this to be a really competitive league top to bottom. Kansas State picked to win the conference. Ayoga lead back for a sixth year. Taking advantage of a, a medical year out and then also a, a COVID year out as well. Corey Irvin, the new head coach for Chicago State, and she has her work cut out for her, a team that was 1 in 26 a year ago with a very young roster. Well, Corey Irvin's a Chicago native, played at Fresno State herself, was a very successful high school coach at Whitney Young. That's a magnet high school in the Chicago Public Schools. Very good academically. She won three state championships coaching the Dolphins at Whitney Young. So she's familiar with the city of Chicago and the type of talent and the type of talent she feels like she can draw from the East Coast as they join the NEC. Chicago State was an independent program the last couple of years. So certainly some challenges with scheduling and recruiting. She's looking forward to trying to rebuild this Cougars program. Bill Finley making one change from the starting lineup as Kenzie Hare will start the second half in place of Hailey Tanky. And Audie Crooks picking up where she started the ball game by scoring inside. Crooks now with a dozen. Chicago State with a 23-16 deficit in the second quarter, much better than their 29-3 start in the first quarter. Air hands to Ryan, and Crooks comes out to set the high screen. And she gets bumped and is foul called on Chicago State. And Crooks set that screen and trying to fight through. It's not always a good idea when Crooks sets his screen. Cyclones with this baseline. Oh, they're going to switch to the sideline out of bounds here. Over in front of the Iowa State bench. And so Emily Ryan, who dished out a number of assists, six assists in the first half, and only scored one basket, one of six shooting. Very not much like her, but, you know, that's just kind of an aberration. That's not going to happen very often. Here's Addie Brown heating up from outside, and Brown has her second three-point basket and of the ball game and has 15 points to lead Iowa State. And that's an area where Iowa State can really hurt, too, when it comes to three-point shooting prowess because whether it's a secondary break or an offensive rebound, they are always looking to spot up from beyond the arc, challenging to make sure that you're finding all five players in a white jersey if you're not in that typical offensive set where you can set your defense. Again, the ball comes inside to Crooks, a miss this time, and the rebound is taken by Kayla Mount. Hohenhecker brings the ball into the offensive end for the Cougars. Takeaway by Brown. Tries to dish at the last moment to Ryan. They misconnect, but the ball deflected out of bounds by the Cougars. And Chicago State will make a quick change. Now leaving the lineup, and Taylor Norris, a senior from Rochester, New York, will come in. As a distinction, the only player, Coach Corey Irvin, believes that is a four-year player at Chicago State. We're not talking just women's basketball. And a travel violation called against Audie Crooks to nullify that basket. Well, we mentioned that Chicago State and Independent the last couple of years have had some players moving in and out, had some scheduling irregularities because of the challenges of being an in independent in college basketball. And as we mentioned in the first half, they've joined the Northeast Conference. They're the, by far the further most Western school in the conference, but great airline connections to the East Coast and great recruiting connections there. Long effort by Culver won't go. Ariana Jackson quickly bringing it up the court. Brooks at the high post, turns. Brooks trying to battle her way inside. Ryan looks for three. An off shooting day for Emily Ryan, but last year she had 49% of her shots, and you know it'll just be a matter of time before she gets that stroke back. Take away by Kenzie Hare. Hare tries to finish, she does, and has a chance at a three point play. The transfer from Marquette. Able to bring the ball down and score. 
Nice job on the defensive end. Emily Ryan just digging in. Enough on the defensive end down in the post to pop that ball loose. Kenzie Hare goes the other direction in a hurry. Taylor Norris gets the foul. That will be her third. Hare, honorable mention, all Big East last season. Hit 91 threes, which was 13th best in the country. And she gets three con the conventional way that time. 60-19 Iowa State. Walker handing it off to Culver. An open look for McGee, who's not yet scored, though she is the starter for Chicago State, but a true freshman from Milwaukee. A lot of freshmen on this roster for Chicago State, as you saw when we did our roster breakdown. Cyclones turn it over, yeah, and the ball will go back to the Cougars. Yeah, it looks like Ariana Jackson just stepped out of bounds there. Kenzie here trying to push the basketball up that sideline. A little bit of a wide pass. The transfer from LSU, Alyssa Williams comes on. Six points and five rebounds for her in her first seven minutes of action as a Cyclone. Culver. Streaks to the basket and scores, and she leads Chicago State in scoring. That's her 11th point. Emily Ryan coming off that 36-point performance against Stanford in the NCAA tournament. An unbelievable, unforgettable performance by her. She had six threes in that ball game. Here's Jackson looking for a three. A quick rebound that time by Brown, who gets up with a little painful expression. There may have been some... Uh, she may have been hit. She's kind of holding her uh, midsection or maybe her left hip a little bit, but not wanting to come out. Maddie Brown uh, just on Josie Hill, her third. Maddie Brown just skying up above all white and blue jerseys there. You know, the one thing that Bill Finley might not have liked on the stat sheet in the first half is his team's got only six second chance points. I'm sure he wants them to secure more offensive rebounds, and Brown took that message to heart right there. She now will check out for a moment. And Emily Ryan goes to the free throw line. Ryan, who came into the ball game, number nine in career steals at Iowa State. And has two more, which moved her already into a tie for eighth. And one more, and she'll be in seventh place in the tie for seventh in career steals. She notches both free throws for four off the line, a total of seven points for the Cyclone senior. Culver goes to the baseline. Shot won't fly by Walker. Loose basketball on the floor. Nice job of contesting for it by Emily Ryan. She comes up with it. Ryan gets the 50-50 ball. Tries to finish it herself and does. Nice job on the defensive end. Emerging from that scrum with the basketball. Starts dribbling while she's on her knees. Emerges from the crowd. Takes it end to end with the finish. Cyclones with a 43-point lead. Their biggest of the ball game. Emily Ryan. Will check out and Reagan Wilson comes on to take her place. Move by Ryan to finish. Chicago State with a little full court pressure defense here. And again, very much a learning experience for Corey Irvin's team. You mentioned her time at Whitney Young High School in Chicago. She won 85% of her games there and three state championships in an 18-year career. Yeah, she put some really good players there at Whitney Young. Cyclone fans might remember Amanda Thompson, who played for Oklahoma, and Sherry Cole. She would have been a product of Whitney Young High School. Williams bats away the intended pass on the post, and so Chicago State will have to reload with 14 seconds on the shot clock. And again, Williams really making her presence felt. A rangy 6'2 sophomore. Came to Iowa State last year after the transfer from LSU, but got in the transfer portal a bit late, and so really too late to work her into the rotation a season ago as Asha Walker nails her second three of the ball game. But Alyssa Williams just brings so much promise 
as she and Crooks do the combination of 40 minutes inside. Open look for Jones, looking for her first basket of the, or second basket of the ball game, her first three of the game. She nails it there, and the Cyclones really exploding here in the third quarter. Loose basketball picked up by Williams. Reagan Wilson finds Harris, and Harris scores for the first time. Sydney Harris, the transfer from TCU, started her career at Central Michigan. Where she was the MAC freshman of the year. Lob inside to Hill. This is Marissa Gant trying to work it back inside. And this will lead us to a break in the action with 4.16 left to play in period number three. Iowa State 69, Chicago State 24. With good reason, but Addie Brown, I mean, in her own right, is, I think, just has just as much opportunity. Um, but they're different kinds of players. That's why they're so complementary of each other. And add to the Addie Brown line, four assists and seven rebounds to go along with those 15 points. Four rebounds for Adi Crooks. Speaking of Crooks, she tries to drive the baseline and gets fouled. And we had a quick graphic up there with Elisa Williams and what she's been able to do today. I think more Iowa State fans, are more, they realize that they need another post option. Um, Adi isn't the type of player who's going to play 35, 38 minutes a game, and so who's in the game when she is not? And if Adi gets into any kind of foul trouble. Harris goes to the floor, and then as Crooks gets the ball, it's taken away from her by Tally Williams. Williams, who did not play in the first quarter, but has seen some action since, works it over to Culver. Cyclones go back into a zone defense one of the few times today. That turnaround won't go, and the rebound is cleared by Kelsey Jones. Sophomore for Iowa City, averaged five points a game a season ago for Iowa State. The lob comes inside. Harris will go to the line with a foul called against Marissa Gant. Good recognition by the freshman guard, Reagan Wilson, as Harris had her defender sealed. Nice little lob pass. Harris, a very versatile player for Bill Fenley, says that she can play four different positions. Again, at Central Michigan two years ago, she was the Mid-America Conference Freshman of the Year, averaging 17 points and playing 36 minutes. Transferred to TCU, but did not get to play a lot because of an ankle injury, which she's still trying to shake off a little bit, but for the most part is healthy. And I can see that versatility in her game. You know, in a major conference, like the Big 12, she's probably a little undersized to do much in the post, but in that mid-major level, I could see her really making hay at that two, three, four positions. Nice and strong, can step out and shoot it from deep. In addition to the ankle, which apparently is healed, she's had a little bit of a wrist injury, which is um, Bill Fenley describes as more annoying than hampering. That shot a high archer by Asha Walker that won't go. Tally Williams getting the foul. And that will be team foul number five on Chicago State. Cyclones still without a foul here in the third quarter. And Iowa State in the bonus for the final 3.06 of the third quarter. Well, Iowa State certainly did a nice job defensively in the first half. But turning up the defensive pressure in this third quarter, and seven minutes in this third, turning the Cougars over five times. Wouldn't be surprised if Coach Finley maybe chatted a little with his team at the halftime break about turning things up a little bit on the defensive end. I think talking to Coach Finley, preparation for this game, and we've mentioned this earlier in the broadcast, they know that defensively is where they really need to improve to be an elite team. Brown now with 17 Iowa State points. Culver. Matched up against Reagan Wilson, a couple of freshman point guards. As they try to work the ball inside, Iowa State gets called for the foul. It is Eileen Tanky getting her first foul, and that's the first foul of the quarter against the Cyclones. Gant triggers, ranging into the backcourt. 
to get it is Asha Walker, but it was not touched by a cyclone, so it's a backcourt violation, and Iowa State plays it at midcourt. And that is turnover number 14 for Chicago State, contrasted to the eight for Iowa State. Officials having a little conversation here. Scott Yarbrough and Tiffany Bridges and Zach Frost talking things over. Cyclones trying to win an opener, a season opener, for the 30th consecutive time, and that is the longest streak in Division One. UConn and Oregon State are right behind with 28 opening game wins in a row. And now the call reversed, and the ball will go to Chicago State. Yeah, I think ruling that an Iowa State player must have touched the basketball, which is what caused it to go into the ball to go into the backcourt. Right. So the officials, that's why there are three of them out there. And they have reversed the call. Perhaps doesn't matter in this game, but want to make sure that, you know, it's a tune-up for the officials too. It is. Right? And so they, they got to practice coming together as an officiating crew, making sure that they're making all the right calls. So. Yeah, it brings up a good point that Bill Fenley brought up the other day. Is you talk about, well, what can you achieve if you're Iowa State in a blowout game like this? And it figured Chicago State was 1-26, and, and the Cyclones in the parade in the country. It might be that way. He says, you know, for all you learn in practice, you learn a lot more playing in games. Jackson pushes it ahead. Crooks looking for an open player, finds one, and Panky from the corner with her third three of the ball game. Pretty good debut for the freshman from Johnston, Iowa, with a 12-point performance. And that turned around, nothing but cord from the free throw line by Taylor North. But I thought Finley's point about what you learn in a game is so much more than what you could ever learn in a practice important in a situation like this. Well, there is something to be said for pressure and stepping up when the, the lights are brightest. And certainly this game has never been in doubt for Iowa State. But you're playing in front of several thousand fans. I think that can, can change things a little bit as far as nerves, how you approach a game shot selection, decision making. You know, these are all the kinds of things that are important factors. Playing basketball or any sport at this high of a level, certainly there's a lot to the phys physical aspects of the game, but there's a lot from a mental perspective as well. And those are all things that start to show themselves when, when the lights are brightest. First free throw miss for Brown, who'd hit her first five attempts at the free throw line. Last year, a 74% free throw shooter. She has 18 points to lead Iowa State in scoring as we go to the final two minutes of quarter number three. Long try by Culver, and she has her third three. Dale yeah, Fenley able to play everybody that's available so far, and really Corey Urban doing the same thing, and it's another three from Alana Culver. Ayanna Culver, a lot of confidence out of the freshman from Queens. Back-to-back -back triples. And a total of 14 points. Open look for Jones. And the rebound taken down by Mount. Pulling up at the free throw line and misfiring is Williams. And leading the other way comes Kelsey Jones. Crook pins her defender, misfires on the shot, fights for the offensive rebound, Cats get it. And once again, it's Ayanna Culver bringing it up for Chicago State. Norris kicks it back out, and at the free throw line, that shot off to the left, and fighting for the rebound is Addie Brown. And Brown well on her way to a double-double as she snatches her ninth rebound to go along with 18 points. Crooks makes a move, and we'll go to the free throw line. Foul against Taylor Norris. That's her fourth foul. Audie Cooks try to add to the 12 points she scored already today. Also has tracked down four rebounds, has a pair of assists. Brooks last year averaging 19 points a ball game. Honorable mention All-America, preseason All-America this year. Also all Big 12 tournament, and tournament won by the Cyclones. 
Brooks, who has improved her free throw shooting, one of two from the line on that exchange. Final half minute of quarter number three here in Ames at Hilton Coliseum on an education day where about 4,200 students are in to watch. The Cyclones open the season. Hence the 11 o'clock start. Brown, Crooks, two, and a chance at one more. Maddie Brown with the unselfish look from the top of the key. Maddie Brown with 18 points, five assists, nine rebounds. That foul number five on Taylor Norris. So she will check out with a total of four points. Brooks last year, you mentioned it at the start of our telecast, that 40 point game against Maryland and Bill Fenley said her life changed right after that. Suddenly, she's a national figure. And with her engaging personality and her great smile, a lot of sponsors are certainly signing up with her. In fact, when you come to the Des Moines airport- I was just go gonna down, say that, Larry. <laughs> go ahead, you finish the story <laughs> then. You finish the greeting no, that Audie no, Fitz no. gives yeah. arriving passengers That's right. in Des Moines. She sure does. You come down those stairs just past the past the security on your on your way to the uh, passenger pickup or the luggage exchange. She's right there with a nice big smile. Welcome to Iowa. And that basket will count to end quarter number three. Cyclones have an eight. They've had some nice help from the outside from Ayanna Culver. Ayanna Culver, freshman out of New York. Only 5'3", she's been hampered by an Achilles injury in the preseason, but looks pretty smooth on those. She leads the way for the Cougars with 14 points. Only Cougar in double figures today. Iowa State, however, three players in double figures. Addie Brown with 18, Ani Crooks with 16, and Eileen Tanky in her official Hilton College Coliseum debut with a dozen points. No starters on the floor for Iowa State as we begin this final quarter of play. Sydney Harris is out there along with Elisa Williams, also Lily Hansford, Reagan Wilson, and Kenzie Hare. So all non-starters starting the fourth quarter for Bill Fenley's team. The Cyclones switching things up a little bit on the defensive end, and that's where you can see Lily Hansford and her long arms. Problem on the defensive end. She is able to knock that basketball away from Chicago State. Cyclones retrieve it, and they go the other way. In fact, not only all players who are non-starters, but all newcomers to the Iowa State program, all getting action on the floor at the same time. I mean, Williams was there a year ago, but as a red shirt, mm -hmm. practiced with the team, but as far as game action, it's a brand new unit. Reagan Wilson about to inbound, the fresh firm from Noblesville, Indiana, playing with a broken nose. The lob comes inside for Williams, who's so athletic. She spins and scores and shows some of that athleticism right there. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch Elisa as opposing teams start to scout her and sit on that right shoulder, making it more challenging for her, go her to go to her left hand. Josie Hill makes a couple of moves and connects for the Cougars. Today's game, Elisa hasn't really had to utilize a counter move. She's been able to pretty comfortably turn over her right shoulder and go to that strong left hand. A walk called against Wilson. Cyclones turning it over for the 10th time today. And they have forced 14 against Chicago State. Cougars will be right back in action on Wednesday. Once again, it's a road game for them as they travel to Butler. And the Cyclones will stay home for a Thursday night date with Indiana State. And the foul will be whistled against Kenzie Hare. Cyclones with some challenging non-conference games at some neutral sites. Oh M yeah. Month of December are challenging. We'll go to on the road to Iowa. Couple non-conference games. UConn in mid-December. Travel to a tournament where they'll face off against number one preseason South Carolina. So late November, early December, that's a challenging slate for Iowa State. So they'll be playing the teams that wound up in the championship game last year, Iowa and South Carolina. And then, as you mentioned, UConn, ranked number two in the country. Yeah, that's quite a schedule that Bill Fenley 
has put together to challenge his team prior to a very challenging Big 12 schedule. Williams one of two at the foul line, offensive rebound by the Cougars, but it's taken away by Kenzie Hare. And his hair comes up the floor. He gets fouled by Culver. Reagan Wilson inbound from an athletic family. Her dad, basketball player at Alabama. Her brother now plays basketball at Akron. Cougars make a change. Kiara Champagne into the lineup for the first time. Freshman from Queens, New York. I think we've said freshman from Queens, New York a couple of times regarding the Cougars today. Addie Brown left open at the free throw line. Rebound run down by Hare. Hare now lines up for three and it's stuck in the rim. Well maybe aside from that one, Kinsey Hare doing some nice things for Iowa State on the glass. She only played 13 minutes, she has five rebounds. Addie Brown and Audie Crooks do their best to go up and Knock that basketball loose. See the athleticism out of both of those players. <laughs> they do. Just tell me she loosened it up a little bit for Addie to go up and knock it all the way free. Here in bounds and open underneath the basket to score easily. And you talk about executing your out of bounds play the way you wanted to. The Cyclones did at that time. And it's a 20 point game for Addie Brown. With Walker on the drive, knocking it down. Walker now with eight points for Chicago State. Brown, not picked up by anybody, missed the layup shot, and the rebound is cleared by Kayla Mount. Hill trying to fake pass Brown. Brown stays with her, the rebound claimed by Hare. Cyclones out rebounding Chicago State, 45-32 today. Of course, Iowa State with a size advantage and taking advantage of that. Again, Wilson directing the offense. And scores herself. We talked about the fact that Emily Ryan's going to have somewhat of a limited minute situation, at least early in the season. And that's really giving Reagan Wilson a great opportunity to not only learn by standing next to her in practice, by playing in place of her in games. About a year ago, we saw Ariana Jackson play quite a bit of point guard, and she can do that. I think the preference would be for Reagan Wilson to spell Emily at that ball handling position, but certainly nice that Ariana can do it if and when needed. In fact, in this lineup here, she might be doing that. Of course, she brings the experience coming off an outstanding freshman year. And talking about Ariana Jackson, Bill Fenley says, She's probably the best player on our team that nobody talks about. Here's Culver firing. And the rebound by Jackson. Yeah, Ariana, she's just so solid. Does so much for the program that again, maybe a little bit under the radar. Nice speed that time. Williams can't finish it, but we'll have a chance at the free throw line. Deanna Culver with foul number four. And Alyssa Williams will go to the line. Double-double in the exhibition game against Central College last week with 10 rebounds and 13 points. But the lights have come on and she has shown brightly. And the left hand now a point away from scoring in double figures in her Iowa State debut. Also has six rebounds. Ten points for Williams. A 50-point lead for the Cyclones at 89 to 39. Jackson is staying right with Culver. Hair out. Defensively. Take away by Iowa State. Harris comes up with a steal. On the drive. Not able to score that time is Hare. Maybe Hare. a little bit out of control going down. Well, pretty little, pretty little take to the basket. Just couldn't quite get the ball to roll in the direction that she wanted. But good job on the defensive end to come up with that steal, knock the basketball loose. 
Lob inside, intended for Chicago State, but batted away by Sidney Harris. Jackson around the Williams screen. Now feeds it back to Williams, or tries to, but getting in the way, Chicago State. Nice defensive effort that time by Josie Hill. Asha Walker working against Ariana Jackson. Fires and banks it home. Walker with her third three, and she's in double figures with 11 for the Cougars. You mentioned Ariana Jackson just a bit ago, and Coach Finley saying she's the best player that no one talks about, and I just have been, these last couple possessions, enjoying really focusing in on her on the defensive end. She often takes on the most challenging defensive position in, in the guard court, and she did that as a freshman. Sydney Harris knocks down a three. Whomever is on top of the Iowa State scouting report out on the perimeter, it's usually AJ who picks up that defensive assignment. And the collision that time, and they will get the aforementioned AJ. Ariana Jackson with a foul. That will be her third. Had two really early in the ballgame, and has stayed away from foul trouble ever since. Culver is going to get a rest for Chicago State. And Haley Hohenhecker comes back in. She started the ball game at a point for Chicago State. A little over five left to play in this one, and the Chicago State Cougar Iowa State game will be history, and Iowa State will extend their mastery over the Cougars to five and zero. Oh. Williams with the rebound. Kelsey Jones puts it to the court, takes it to the basket, and will go to the free throw line. But before she shoots her free throws, we're going to call a timeout with 4.49 left to play in regulation. State again, it's a program rebuilding under a new head coach in Corey Irvin, and this is what they've got coming up. Well, this is Chicago State team. They spend a lot of time on the road early on. But although it's, it's a lot better than what they dealt with the last couple years as an independent, a lot of schedule irregularities there. And we'll stay on the road at Butler later this week. A couple Power Five programs in Florida and Arizona. And for Iowa State, three of their next five against programs out of the Missouri Valley Conference, including Drake and UNI, those two teams picked to finish the top of the MVC this year. Kelsey Jones at the line for Iowa State. And then the two at the foul line, and the Cyclones boost their lead to 52 points with just under five minutes left to play. So we mentioned that Chicago State schedule as tough as it is, and they've got a later date at Ohio State as Asha Walker knocks down her third three of the ball game. She has 13 points. She and Culver with 27 of the 44 points scored by Chicago State. Reagan Walker dribbling, and Bill Fenley wants a timeout. So again, he has a lot of new talent on the floor, trying to blend every one seconds left in the season opener for both Chicago State and Iowa State. The Cyclones have led all the way after getting off to a 29 to nothing start in the first quarter. Freshman point guard, Reagan Wilson directing the attack. Ariana Jackson finds Jones at the high post, tries to get it down low, and the ball is tipped. Cyclones have four in double figures with Addie Brown's 20 and Audie Crook 16 leading the way. A dozen for Eile Tanky making her appearance, her freshman debut here at Iowa State. And Alyssa Williams, the transfer from LSU, who was redshirted last year, making her debut with 10 points. Going to call an offensive foul on Williams, trying to establish that post position. And Haley Hohenecker, who's from not too far away from Plymouth, Minnesota, brings the ball up the court for Chicago State. She is one of the transfers they have from Arkansas Little Rock. Hansford gets her hands on the ball and comes up with a block. Yeah, and Hansford really known for what she can do from beyond the arc. She's a long lefty who can shoot it from deep when she gets it going. We've seen a couple times in this game where she's gotten some nice deflections, a block shot there. She can be a real weapon on the defensive end depending on what Iowa State is in. 
She arrived a little late for Iowa State. She had transferred from Oregon State and then being on the quarters academically, she didn't get to town as early as the other newcomers did. She hasn't scored yet, but she's also a good three-point shooter at 45% of her threes last year at Oregon State. Nothing but net for Josie Hill. Hill, the top returning scorer on the court for Chicago State. We'll mention again, you see a Cunningham, who is their top returning scorer, tore her ACL late last year. He hope to have her back around Thanksgiving, maybe a little bit later, but add her to Chicago State. And when they get into Northeast Conference play, that will be a factor that will help the Cougars. Hill making a move. Walker trying to shake Jones. Again, Hansford uses those long arms to bat it out of bounds, and with 10 seconds on the shot clock, the Cougars will inbound. Well, I can see Lily being a, a really nice weapon for Iowa State if they employ any of that 1-3-1 one, one zone defense that we saw a little earlier. If you have a player like her, Addie Brown, athletic players who have those long wingspans, they can be really challenging in that type of a defensive look. Williams has come back in for the Cougars. Walker from the three-point line. Make it a two-point basket, 15 points now for Walker. Hensford looking for her first Cyclone basket, not this time, but the follow shot won't go by Williams, doing a good job of the offensive glass, but not able to finish, and then a foul whistled against, or out of bounds, I should say, against Iowa State. So the Cougars will play it in with two and a half minutes left to play in this season opener, which will see Iowa State win their 30th consecutive first game of the season that is the longest streak in the country and Asha Walker is proving to be quite a long range shooter Chicago State now with nine triples 28 percent from beyond the arc actually shooting the same percentage from deep that they are from the entire floor and certainly having to shoot a lot of threes against a much taller cyclone team who makes it so tough to get the ball inside especially with the size the Cougars lack. And a whistle and a foul on Callie Williams. And this is oh, when excuse me. Coach Finley, other than Kelsey Jones in the lineup, a lot of new faces. Coach Finley trying to let this batch of newcomers play through it a little bit. Cougars in the middle of a 10-0 run in the last 245. They've hit three field goals in a row. Now some teaching moments, yep. no doubt, for Bill Finley and his staff. Yep, this is where you figure out you don't have Emily Ryan on the floor to direct traffic. You don't have Ariana Jackson. You don't have Addie Brown. So who's going to be the communicator? Who's going to be the leader? Who's going to be the floor general out there? I think Reagan Wilson is who they would like it to be. That's a position that she will grow into. Fourth team foul called against Iowa State. Ball knocked out of bounds once again by the Cyclones. So Iowa State about to win their 30th season opener, again, longest streak in the country. Bill Finley about to notch his 778th victory. He is number three most wins among active coaches in Division I and number 25 all-time in that category. And the Cougars will get to the free throw line. Harris committing her second foul. And that the fifth, so the Cougars will be in the bonus for the final 123. Iowa State ranked eighth in the country in the preseason Associated Press poll and certainly living up to that advanced building so far today. Tally Williams with the free throw. One more for the freshman from Queens, New York. Iowa State fans will have a good opportunity to, to see this Iowa State team here in the next couple weeks. Four straight home games, and five of their first six in Hilton Coliseum. Several good opportunities to see this squad tune up for what we mentioned is a challenging late November, early December slate. Yeah, some real challenges on that schedule. That's for sure the ball inside to Williams who connects. A dozen points for Alyssa Williams in her Cyclone debut. Williams trying to move inside against Williams. 
Williams against Williams, and it's the Cyclone Williams who tips it away. And at the other end, Jones gets fouled by Asha Walker. Starters out for the fourth quarter for Iowa State, and again, a lot of learning experience for the new people. That's right. Kelsey Jones gave Iowa State a lot of good minutes a year ago as a first year player, and if your last name is Jones, spelled J O E N S, you know how to score. <laughs> you should do. Jones with one more free throw attempt. And we're down to the final 40 seconds. Lengthy three, knocked down by Honecker. Credit to the Chicago State team in this fourth quarter, not going away. And this game has been, the outcome has been decided since early in the first quarter, but they've hung right in there. I know that feels kind of weird to say that with a 40-point loss, but kudos to them, especially in this fourth quarter, continuing to shoot, hitting their four last field goals in the game. Cyclone's about to give Bill Fenley his 60th straight victory when holding opponents under 59 points. And they have just done that, or they will at least momentarily. Still have 1.2 seconds left to play. And Chicago State put themselves in such a deep hole, I think you brought up a good point at 29 to three. And then so they played, I would think, somewhat respectable according to their expectations for the final three quarters. Well, they didn't quit. Long season ahead, and welcome back to college basketball. Fun to be back. So overall, your impressions of Iowa State's opener against Chicago State? Well, not surprising. First few possessions, Iowa State wants to get the basketball into Audie Crooks. Emily Ryan uh, leads the way for this squad again, not playing a lot of minutes yet. Addie Brown still very, very consistent, very versatile. I like what I specifically saw out of Eileen Tanky and Alyssa, Alisa Williams, a couple of new players for Iowa State who are giving the Cyclones some good things, but there are a lot of minutes still available for this Iowa State team. <coughs> Party!